again, Mrs. Schroeder. Nice to meet you, fellow Sun Devils. I'm going to teach you a little bit about writing process today, and more specifically, thesis statements. If you take a look up here, we're going to be talking about writing strategies. That's our objective today, how to make it a little easier for you. Um, we're also going to have our big idea of I can apply strong textual evidence to support my analysis and complex inferences drawn from a text, okay? And the last question is, how do we evaluate our writing? What tools do we use with that? How can we use thesis statement as a form of evaluation and reflection? So some of you are kind of going thesis statement, heard about it, not really sure what it is. First, let's identify what thesis statement means, okay? A thesis statement, it's basically its purpose is to drive your paper. Okay, so that's what um, the thesis statement does. It drives your paper. It moves it in the right direction that you want it to move in. And it takes your reader on a journey so your reader knows exactly where your thoughts start to connect. And it keeps the writer organized in their thoughts. So these are all good tools to have. Now there's a little formula that I put together over the years working with my students. And my math geeks are gonna be like, yes, formula, numbers, letters, woo! My English people in the room are thinking, great, formulas, math, letters, numbers, woo. Don't worry, it's not that hard. It's just to kind of get you so that you can see a thesis statement, how it develops, sort of the structure of it to make it more visual for you, all right? So let's get started. T plus O plus one, two, and three. That's it, not scary, right? So let's identify what these different parts are. I like to change colors on my um, markers, so if you'll bear with me just a little bit. It just makes things a little more visual for me um, when I'm working on the board, as well as for you, okay? All right, so T, O, and one, two, and three, okay? Your T equals topic, the what you're writing about. Your O is your opinion. Now remember, I did say we're talking about a thesis statement in context of using persuasive writing. So what that means is, is your job is not to necessarily change my point of view, but to persuade me so that I could change my point of view on any given topic, okay? So that's why we're looking at your opinion. And the one, two, and three, well, these are your reasons why. They are the reasons that back up why you think what you think in regards to the topic, okay? Let's take a minute and see how this plays out in context. I'm just gonna pick a random topic, something that some of you may have strong feelings about. Why? Because you don't get to choose your writing topics often in life. They just say, write about this. Well, that's a hard thing to do. The reason I teach this is so that students can argue it either way. And it's more about arguing the ideas and how they come together to persuade your audience versus this is how strong I feel about something. Okay, so let me change colors one more time. And I'm gonna pull up an example, okay? So for this example, I'm gonna have my topic be school uniforms. Right, some of you are like, boo, school uniforms. And some of you are like, yay, school uniforms. Either way, it doesn't matter, totally fine. Um, it's your opinion. Remember, we're just trying to talk about the topic, okay? So school uniforms, I'm next going to develop an opinion. For this example, I'm gonna say that they're necessary. Okay, now I gotta come up with three reasons why. Why are they necessary? Uh, well, let's see. One reason might be is that they help with cost. Okay, another reason might be that they help with safety. Okay. And another reason might be that they help with unity. Now, it's time to take these ideas and write them out actually into a thesis statement. Remember, a statement is one statement followed by punctuation. So I'm just gonna fill in the blanks. That's all I'm going to do. I'm gonna start off with my topic and say, school uniforms are necessary. because they are co 
cost efficient. Um, provide safety and unity. Okay, one statement. A lot of big ideas there in one statement. Let me show you where your T is. I'm going to use my handy dandy little dots here. My T is school uniforms. There's my topic, okay? Following my formula, T, T. My opinion is I'm saying that they're necessary. Okay, again, you can argue this any way you wish. It's just giving your ideas and persuading your audience. Now I'm moving forward to why are they necessary or how? They're cost efficient, they provide safety, and they provide unity. T, O, one, two, three. Easy, right? So my next step from here would be, I would take these ideas and I would move this into my first paragraph at the very bottom. I would start with a hook, move on to an intro. Thesis goes at the bottom of your first paragraph, always. And from there, I would start moving on to the body of my paper. Now guess what? One, two, and three, those are my three paragraphs of my paper. In the body. I already know what I'm gonna be talking about. All I have to do is find textual evidence supports to provide factual information as to how school uniforms are cost efficient, or how they provide school safety, or how they provide unity amongst a staff, a school, the children, a group of people, okay? How do I do that? Find for examples. Uh, for unity, our military uses uniforms. Why? It shows a lot of different ranks. It shows responsibility. It unifies them in the same mindset. You get the idea? So that does provide a sense of unity. I might want to make that link as an example when I'm talking about school uniforms and how they provide unity. So you get the idea on how you can talk about that later on in your paper. Now, how does this relate to literature? Um, well, let's see. Let's talk about one of my favorite books. Uh, it is The Great Gatsby, written by F. Scott Fitzgerald. And let's talk about how we could drive the bus with writing a thesis statement in regards to The Great Gatsby. So I'm going to start off with my T. Um, F. Scott Fitzgerald. Okay. And slash, I'm going to put Gatsby. I know I'm talking about that book specifically, okay? I'm gonna say my O, let's see. Gotta develop an opinion about it, okay? I'm not quite sure what I'm doing with that opinion just yet. I might wanna think about it going, hmm, what are some themes in The Great Gatsby? Well, I might say that there are some running themes. Maybe that's my opinion. I believe that there's some connecting running themes within The Great Gatsby, okay? Now, I need to say, whoa, give me some examples, my one, two, three reasons why I believe there's running themes that contribute to Great Gatsby's downfall. All right, so I might say materialism. I might say corruption. Okay. And last, I might say hope, or I could put in the American dream. more specifically, all right? Now all I have to do is put this into a thesis statement following my formula up there. So let's put it together. It'll look something like this. F. Scott, it's plural, Fitz, Gerald, Novel, the great Gatsby has recurring themes such as materialism. has reoccurring themes such as materialism, corruption, and the American dream. Okay? So now all I gotta do is take this and find my T. Boom! Fitzgerald, right? Find my O. 
reoccurring themes. Find my one, two, three reasons. Materialism, corruption, the American dream. Okay? So now all I have to do as the writer is take this thesis statement and write a great paper on how Fitzgerald's themes reoccur throughout the text, how it affects the reader and the audience, provide examples of materialism through characters and character analysis, provide examples of corruption through examples throughout the text. I could use modern day examples on how corruption affects the American dream. There's lots of ways I can prove my point and persuade my audience either to be like, yay, Fitzgerald was dead on, or boo, he missed the mark. It's up to you to decide on what you want to do with that, but this is a foolproof way. It is cross-curricular. It works for all writing when you are trying to organize your thought processes for um, any type of curriculum. It works in history. It works in um, debate. It works in drama. It works in English. I've seen it work in a lot of different areas. It's not that different than a hypothesis that you use in science. So there's a lot of crossovers there, okay? So if you can master this, all of a sudden writing becomes easy. And that's just a matter of putting it all together through the writing process. I hope you learned something today. Remember our goals today were to talk about the writing strategies we can use to become stronger writers, providing um, evaluation and reflection through the use of a thesis statement. I'll see you next time. Have a great day. Bye-bye.